Hi, welcome to Kolel Avat Israel. Bruchim Abayim. We are today. There's other shame on every Tuesday. We do our partners in Torah class for the week. Today, Parashat Chayesara. But as usual, we want to first and foremost thank our sponsors. And first and foremost, we want to say thank you to Mr. and Mrs. Selwyn Isako, partner in Torah Foundation. We want to thank Zat Hashem. Mr. Bernie and Zahavid Baruch, Rafash Lemati Baruch Chai Ben Chaya Miriam. Bezat Hashem, thank you to Mr. and Mrs. Daniel Mog, to Mr. and Mrs. Yonatan Harush. Bezat Hashem, we want to also say a special prayers today to our patient that just received, both patients who received heart, I mean, uh, lung transplants. Bezat Hashem, Rafash Lema, to Moshe Ben Marcel, Rafash Lema to Yosef. Ben Esther, and Bezat Hashem Nekol Cholam Cha Israel. We also want to say Refuah Shlema to Flori Bat Rachel, Anad Bat Zizel, Karen Bat Aliza, Shulamit Bat Sipora, Esther Bat Ludmila. Bezat Hashem, we also want to say Leilui Nishmat. This week class um, will be Leilui Nishmat, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs. And Bezat Hashem also to well, I say Eloi Nishmat Esther Bat Mira Verabi Moshe Lechonam Livracha and Bezat Hashem to Kol Chalal Tzva Ganal Israel the soldiers who died and the Holocaust and the people who died in the terror acts of Hashem first revenge and revenge there blood and may all they be in Gan Eden. All right, so Parashat Chaye Sarah. Chaye Sarah, by the way, is what we call the life of Sarah. But we'll see in a minute that there is almost a contradiction because Sarah really passes away. So the Torah says, Vayu Chaye Sarah, Me'a Shana, Ve'esrim Shana, Ve'sheva Shanim, Shene Chaye Sarah. So first, we see that in the first uh, verse, we have the years of Sarah, of Sarah, the 127 years, are divided into three groups. The group of 100, the group of 20, and the group of 7. In essence, each portion of her group of years represents her amazing innocence and purity and the righteousness she had so you know we know that our sages rashi especially says that her hundred years were like 20 and the 20 like seven what does it mean you know that her full 100 years were as pure as 20 years old that's not responsible for what we call dine halacha of death you know you are not liable until you're 20 for any sins that what we call carry the punishment of death and of course by 13 you should know all of that but when she was 20 she was as innocent as a seven-year-old but also our sages re remind us that Sarah was beautiful even when she was a hundred she was as beautiful as 20 year old we know that Sarah was one of the uh, seven most beautiful women in the world and as we know, there were also seven prophet female in the world, and Sarah was one of them. We know there was Sarah, Miriam, Devorah, Hannah, Abigail, and Hulda. And those are the seven women prophet. And her beauty was so beautiful that we know that when Abraham went to Egypt with her, the whole world saw her beauty. And they brought her immediately to Pharaoh. Something happened with the king of the Philistine, Avimelech. She was so beautiful. That's why... Abraham says, tell them you my sister. But the first word that the Torah opened is Vayehu. Vayehu and they were, meaning that if you look at the word Vayehu, the numerical code of Vayehu is 37. Sarah really considered her life to be 37 years from the full 127. What does it mean? Sarah really, only after she gave birth to Yitzchak, she said she's alive. And we'll see that in the future with Rachel Imenu, you know, when Rachel 
saw that she's not having children after her sister Leah had already seven kids. She, she went to Yaakov and complained and asked him to please pray for me. Otherwise, I'm considered dead if I don't have children. She said, if I don't have children, I'm considered as a dead person. And that's exactly what Sarah considered her life before Yitzchak. So Vayihu is really the years of 37, from 90 years old until 127. This moment in history of our Jewish calendar is the day of the Akedah, the day of the sacrifice that Abraham and Yitzchak went to do. You know, the bounding of Yitzchak on the altar in Beit HaMikdash, so to speak, of the land of Jerusalem in the future, the altar will be the same location of the altars of the temple. And as we know, in that moment, Sarah was 127, Yitzchak was 137, I'm sorry, uh, Abraham was 137, and Yitzchak was 37. So basically, Sarah passes on that day. And it says, Shene Sarah, the two years of Sarah. So we see from that that really you have to learn from any portion of your life. The word Shene is also to learn. Mishnah, right? We have to learn. The word Shana, a year, is really to learn from the year. What happened this year so you can do better next year. And what you've missed this year, they can add next year. And everything that you can do to make a better year in the future. So in essence, the mitzvah of learning from your life is every day. It says here, Vatamot Sarah bekirat arba hi chevron be'eretz kenan. So we know, as we mentioned, this is the day of uh, the binding of Yitzchak. This is the day of Akedah. Question is asked, why Sarah right now is not in Yerushalayim? You know, the Gemara will teach us, and it's also in, in um, Midrash Tan Chuma, that Satan went to Sarah and told her, listen, look, Right now, your husband, Abraham, is sacrificing, is slaughtering Yitzchak. And as we know, Sarah does something very unusual. She goes to Me'arat HaMachpelah versus Jerusalem. You know, we'll know all of this amazing quality that she had from the eulogy that Abraham Avinu wrote for her, which is Eshet Chayl, a woman of valor. We know that Sarah was described in every letter of the Hebrew alphabet by Abraham Avinu, and he taught us many things about her. So Sarah, as we know, it says, Vatischa Kleyom Acharon. She laughed on her last day, meaning that she was happy that Yitzchak and Abraham passed the test, and she went to her burial place. Also, we know in Eshet Chayil, we see it says there is a verse, Zamema Sadeh Vatikachehu. She wanted that field and she took it. The Zohar Kadosh bring that Sarah actually knew about this Me'arat HaMachpelah and she told Abraham to buy it. She was Sarah. Sarah is what we call Sar Hashem. You know, she was frequently visited by angels. We know when the three angels came to visit Sarah and Abraham, that was when they were announcing the birth of Yitzchak. They were visiting Abraham. It came three angels, Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel. Michael came to what we call announce the birth of Yitzchak. Gabriel to destroy Sarah and Gomorrah. And Raphael to heal Abraham. That was his third day of the Brit Milah. He was 99 years old. Sarah was 89 years old. And Yitzchak was not born yet. And as we know, they said, next year will come. That was Erev Pesach. That was the Yudalet in Nisan. And of course, that was at the year 2047. In the year 2048, a year later, Yitzchak was born. And as we know, when the angel visited her, the Zohar Kador says something amazing. You know, if you look at the Chumash, you'll see in that area of this parasha, Vayera, that Sarah has three dots above her name. Three dots, uh, the three kinds of life she'd have, and those three angels that came to visit her. And as you remember, in that uh, in parashat Vayera, Sarah says to Abraham, 
I want you to remove Hagar from our home. And then later on, remove Hagar and Ishmael from our home. And we know that the three angels came, and then we see the next day, two of them goes to Sodom and Gomorrah, one to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and the three cities. And Michael goes back, and the other angel, Gabriel, I mean, Raphael came to save Lot and his daughters, and his wife, of course. Later on, she became a pillar of salt. But there is a question asked. How come two angels went, and how come Michael went back by himself, the angel Michael? You know, we say every day, Michael Sar Israel. He's the angel in charge of the people of Israel. So the Zohar says that the two angels, when they came to Lot, they claimed that we are the angels coming to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And did not say Hashem sent us to destroy. And because they took a pride in this action they were sent to do, they were punished to stay on earth for 137 years. You know, later on, they will go up in the ladder of Jacob. When Jacob had the dreams of the Sulam Yaakov, the ladder of Jacob, which was exactly at the same location of the Akeda, and Yaakov used the rocks, the stones, from the altar of Abraham and Yitzchak, and he put around his head, and he had a dream that angel going, right, from the bo- first to come, from the bottom up, not from the top to the bottom. V'hinei malachei Hashem, olim ve'yordim bo. Those angels was the two angels, Gabriel and Raphael, that was then granted after 137 years return to the heavens. You know, we say, Ki lekach tov natati lachem, torati al ta'azovu. Lekach, the word lekach, I gave you a good lesson, Hashem says to the angel. Lekach is in Gimatria 137. It's exactly the 137 years that they were on earth and then they were returned in the ladder of Yaakov. So Sarah was frequent by many angels. She was an angel herself, the Zohar says. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu heard Abraham complain, when Abraham says, what should I do? She wants me to throw Hagar and Ishmael. And what Hashem says to him, Kol asher tomar lecha Sarah, shema bekola. Everything she tells you, you should listen to her. The word Shema, by the way, Hashem was revealing to Abraham the death of Sarah in the future. Shema is Sheva Me'ot, right? Shin Sheva, the seven years. Mem is the Me'a, and Ain is the Ezrin, the 20. 127 within the word Shema. And we know that Abraham Avinu now is really coming back to bury Sarah. And as we know, Sarah eulogy was Eshet Chayil. Avraham Avinu, as we know, he says, Eshet Chayil mi'imtza ve'rachok mi'peninim mi'chra batach ba'lev ba'ala, meaning that she trusted her husband. What does it mean she trusted her husband? You know, when Avraham Avinu, v'yashkem Avraham ba'boke, when Avraham arose to take Yitzchak to the Akeda, he did not tell Sarah. There's no mention that there was a discussion between him and Sarah about what he's about to do. But she trusted him. Also, she taught him about no assimilation. You know, Sarah, in the Eshet Chai, we read, Darshat Tzemer Ufishtim. Mazet Darshat Tzemer Ufishtim. She gave a lesson about the war and the Lenin. You're not allowed to mix wool and then it's called Nez. She refers to the two nations that cannot be together, or any other nation for that matter, with the Jewish people. She said to Abraham, remember, the sacrifice of Cain and Hevel it was the mixture that's not allowed. As we know, Hashem did not receive the sacrifice of Cain which was the wool, I mean the um, linen. It's made out of plants called pishtan. 
right? And Cain, Cain, Cain was upset. Hashem did not accept his sacrifice. Yet Hashem accepted Hevel's sacrifice. Was wool, was korban, it was a lamb. Meaning that when you mix those two, there is always chaos. We know that Cain ended up murdering Hevel. Both of a jealousy of the korban and the jealousy that Hevel had two sisters, wives, and he had one. And Sarah was teaching Abraham and his children in the future, Bene Israel, not to assimilate with the Goyim. You're not allowed because it's never going to work. You cannot take something from the so called plants and mix it with something from the animals, the kosher animal. It doesn't mix, it doesn't work together. Sha'atnez, you know, the word Sha'atnez. It's a couple words within it. One of them is Satan Az. Satan is very strong when he makes it. And Natash Oz. You leave the strength of Hashem when you mix those two. Sarah was teaching Abraham all about everything. Abraham eulogy to Sarah was the Eshet Fine. And of course, we know later on in the book of Mishle, King Solomon will use the same. And it's written in chapter, uh, the last chapter, if not the 33, Lamed Gimel, in Mishle, King Solomon used this eulogy for his mother, his mother, Batsheva. Batsheva was reincarnation of Sarai Menu. And we know this just, you know, Batsheva, by the way, for the people that think that David Hamel, King David, sinned, Chaz Khalila. Batsheva was actually his first wife to be married, the Shiduch. He gave her to Uriah Hiti. The Zohar says Uriah Hiti was one of his advisor, military, and Uriah Hiti understood the holiness of Batsheva and he never ever touched her. And when he went to war, he divorced her to give her get. And David Amelech, when he married her, she was already not married. The, the Gemara says, whoever thinks that David HaMelech sinned is holding by a mistake. So Sarai Menu now is dying, dead, I'm sorry. Abraham Avinu is coming now to bury her. But before he does something, Vayavo Abraham lispod Sarah velivkota. He came to eulogize her and then to cry. But the word livkota, as you notice in the Torah and the Chumashim, it's half the size of the rest of the letters. So there's a couple of explanations to that. First and foremost, normally we cry, then we eulogize. By the way, as far as crying, the halacha says, you're only allowed to cry for three days of the Shiva. Not the whole Shiva, only three days. And Abraham understood how powerful and what an amazing tzaddik Sarah was, that he didn't want to cry too much, as if he was sorry for both the dead and the Akedah that just happened. And also, Livkota, the Baal Turin brings that if you look at the word Livkota, and if you remove the little kaf, the letter kaf, you remove it, it would spell the word Hulebita. He came to also eulogize for her daughter. Our sages said that Abraham Avinu actually was blessed Bakol, Bakol, both with a boy and a girl, Yitzchak and his sister. That's called Bakol. That's one of the sages' explanation why the half is half the size. And then we know Avraham Avinu here, by the way, we learn a lot of the halachot of avelut, the halachot of mourning. You don't negotiate in front of the dead ever. You don't even do mitzvot in front of the dead. You know, for an example, we say in Halel, Lo hametim hallelujah velo chol yordeduma. Not, we cannot, the dead people cannot do any more mitzvot. They cannot praise Hashem. They cannot do anything. The neshama is still hovering over the dead person the first day until the person is buried. And we see that HaKadosh Baruch Hu taught Abraham not to negotiate in front of her. Not to chaz v'chalila insult the dead. By the way, if you ever go to a funeral, 
you know, for men, for an example, they're obligated to put their tzitzit, you know, the ptilim over the tzitzit, they wear the little tzitzit that they wear on them to put them inside. So it's not shown. We learn this from Abraham Avinu. And here Abraham Avinu is rising from his dead and he goes to speak to the children of Chet, the nation of Chet, and he says to them, Ger vetoshav anuchi imachem. He says, Abraham was revealing to them, says, listen, this is the land of Israel. It's now the land of Ishmael. You are Ger. You are just a settler here right now, a temporary settler. I am the people of Israel, the Toshav. We are the citizen of the land of Israel. That's why when he was blessed, we know that Hashem says to him, you will receive the land of Israel and all the other nations will be removed. All those nations are really basically occupiers of the land of Israel until Mashiach come. Question is asked, how can they occupy the land of Israel? Why why are they ab have the ability to do so unlike any other nation? If you look at the history of Israel, the Greeks came there for a little bit. The Roman came there for a little bit. The Turkish, all of the other nation came for just a little bit. But the Islam stayed there longer. So we learn this from Abraham Avinu by doing the circumcision to Ishmael when he was 13. The Gemara says the Arabs will have achiza. They also said there will be ger. There will be occupiers of the land of Israel until Mashiach will come. So we see here that it says, I want to bury my dead in front of me. So the Baal Aturin brings something amazing. The Baal Aturin says that what's milefanai, you know? If you look at the word milefanai, it's actually 170 in numerical code. What does it mean? He says, I'm going to be buried here, and Sarah will be here, and Milefanai, ahead of us, also in the future, Yaakov will be buried here. It's exactly from that moment, 170 years from now, Yaakov will be buried in Marat HaMachpelah. So we see that Abraham Avinu is basically revealing to us a lot of coded messages within the Torah. Because it's, it's, of course, this is the words of Hashem. The entire Torah has everything that will, had, and is happening. The entire, entire world is hidden in the Torah. And of course, he goes to the children of Chet and not to the leader, Ephron. Why? Because Ephron really is what we call Chaz v'chalila. Rodef Shalom ve Rodef Betza ve Kavot. He chases after the honor. He chases after money. He's a crook. But Abraham does that to do two things. By the way, this is the first real estate deal in the Torah where you have an actual sell and purchase of land. Because, you know, until this moment, nobody bought any land. Only, you know, the land was promised, the whole entire land of Israel. That will be from, you know, Iraq to Egypt in the future. And was, by the way, when you look at the plan of the 100-year plan, this is really exactly happened on the same date of the San Remo agreement in Italy, where they gave back the land of Israel. And if you look at the borders back then, they were from Iraq, from the Euphrates, all the way to Israel, it was part of the land of Israel because, you know, it was given to Abraham Avinu and to Sarah, the whole portion of Egypt, the Goshen, the Delta, was given to Sarah and Abraham. And Hashem says, I'm giving you the land of Israel. Tochnit Hamea, this 100 years, is exactly when Trump came up with the 100 year plan. Hashem will bless him, Bezat Hashem and continue his leadership as it is good for the people of Israel, it's good for Hashem, and of course it's good for the people of America, and it's good for the world. Today, what we see is happening around the world is really a war between two giants, good and evil. And we are also 
witnessing that it's all about persuading the minds of people. Everything you see in the news today is really diversion from what's really happening. What's really happening is really what the Mashiach days are said to be. It will be chaos. Wrong would be right and right would be wrong. Upside down world, people that will tell lies, people will think they're telling the truth, and people that are telling the truth will be conceived with people telling lies. It's exactly Alma the Shikra, the Gemara says, and of course our prophets reveal to us everything that's happening today. But let's continue with our parasha. And Avraham Avinu now is negotiating with Ephron. You know, Ephron says to Avraham Avinu, um, of course, what is this between us? Take it for free, but you know what? Give me 400 shekel kesef over lasukher. You know, Ephron says to him, well, between us, we're just like brothers. You don't need to pay me. But you know what? Why don't you give me 400 kesef over lasukher? By the way, the kind of money, this kind of pure, pure, pure silver that Avraham gave to purchase Narat HaMachpelah and the field around it, in today's equivalency, it's almost six million dollars. Remember, this is talking over 4,500 years ago. And we see that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Zohar says, did something amazing. You know, Ephron keeps stealing from Abraham Avinu. Abraham is counting. And it's, you know, he's feeling the 400, all of a sudden he's missing, he's counting, he's missing. So now, if you notice, the word Ephron is written several times before the deal is signed and the trust deed was de delivered to Abraham. It's written with the letter Vav, Ephron. Like Iparon, that means that you have to write everything. You have to have a trust deed, Shtar Mechira. And Abraham, after he gives him the money, the word Ephron changes and it's not written with the letter Vav anymore. It's also spelled the word Nifra that Hashem took away from him all these 400 shekels, 400 uh, silver coin of weight. Each one of them is like, you know, what we call Unkiya. It's like a block of silver that was work, worth more than anything you can trade it all over the world. You know, Abraham was very rich. When he left Egypt, or when he left even Haran, and when he was in Israel, he had thousands and thousands of people, hundreds and hundreds of slaves, both, you know, male and female. He had all the fortune of the world. Pharaoh, when he escorted him after he found out that Sarah was his wife, he gave them exactly what will happen in the future when the people of Israel would leave the fortune that they took out of Egypt was immense. That's exactly what Abraham got. And after, you know, the deal was done, Ephron became Nifra, meaning that he would lose it. And you know, we see the word Ephron in Gimatria without Vav is 400, alluding to Hashem's actually doing a good deed with Abraham Avinu. What does it mean? In the past, when the Abraham Avinu was promised that his children will be 400 years in Egypt, he also said it was being in the land of Canaan, meaning right now the people of Canaan are stealing from you. Canaan in Gematria is 190. So if we take 400 minus 190, it's 210. Because of the theft of Ephron from Abraham is a Canaanites. Hashem reduced 190 years, the equivalent of Canaan, and the people of Israel will be also taken out 190 years from the so called 400 years that they were promised originally, and they will come out after 210 years. The Rechush Gadol. So, of course, the Zohar says that the people of Chet was urging their leader to sell this land. The Zohar says that Hashem filled the Sadeh, this field, with demons. And they were so afraid of it 
they rushed the chet to uh, they rushed the front to continue and immediately transfer the land to Abraham. And we know, just so you know, as we mentioned, this is the first trust deed, so to speak, as far as purchase of land in the history. And just for the record, the whole land of Israel is the land of Israel. But there was three areas that people, holy forefathers of ours, purchased. They purchased Me'arat HaMachpelah in the field. The, David HaMelech, Yaakov first purchased Shechem, the city of Nablus, where Yosef will be buried. And David HaMelech bought Temple Mount, where the Bet HaMikdash will be. Because we know that all, they knew, I'm sorry, that in the future, those are the most contested land will be in the land of Israel. And it's exactly what's happening today. And we see that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, now after Abraham Avinu buries his wife Sarah, Zephona Livracha, she basically resting at the last day she's happy and she's rested exactly where she needs to be. It's already, by the way, Adam and Chava are buried there. If you notice, what is called Me'arat HaMachpela, the double, Kiryat Arba, the place of four, the four couples that would bury there. We have what we call Adam and Chava, Sarah and Abraham, Yitzchak and Rivka, Leah and Yaakov. The reason I changed the location of each is exactly how they passed away. And there will never be a case where a man and a woman will be right after another. For an example, Adam and Chava. Then will be a female, Sarah and Abraham. Then Yitzchak and Rivka. Then Leah and Yaakov. That's the order of burial. And until today we see that they're contesting this place. You know, the New Testament... It's a very funny uh, document. According to them, they received it from God. And the New Testament in Act 7, which is basically Act 7, verse 16. Okay, It's called an act. Maybe perhaps it is just an act. It says there, And their bodies were brought back to Shechem, and they laid in the tomb of Abraham, and bought from the sum of silver from the sons of Hamor in Shechem. The New Testament places Me'arat HaMachpelah in a different city, in Nablus. Hashem, not making mistakes, He did not remove or transfer Me'arat HaMachpelah, relocated to Nablus. Christianity believe, and they wrote about it. It's not my words, it's their own words in the New Testament, that Me'arat HaMachpelah is actually in Nablus. And Abraham bought from Shechem, Hamor. It's exactly the wrong information. Joseph, Yosef is buried in Shechem, not Me'arat HaMachpelah. There are many, many, many mistakes in the New Testament, thousands of them when it comes to the Torah. And of course, in the Quran as well, many, many mistakes. But I just want to point it out for this section right now. So now, after all said and done, as we know, Avraham Avinu, Avraham Zaken Baba Yami, Adonai Berachet Avraham Bakul. So we know Avraham Avinu, by the way, he is the first one that the Torah describes Zaken, old. Until Avraham Avinu, the word old never were mentioned in the Torah. So our sages will teach us something amazing. It says, Why Hashem? started with Abraham. The Zohar Kadosh brings that Abraham and Yitzchak, when before the Akedah, they look exactly the same. They look the same. They look like twin brothers. And you couldn't tell them apart who's Abraham and who's Yitzchak. And Abraham asked Hashem to change that. He says, how we can, I'm going to sacrifice. Who's who? And Abraham made, I mean, Hashem made Abraham old. He made him look old. First time the gray hair came to the world and the wrinkles and everything that distinguished us from young to old came with Abraham. And Yitzchak, by the way, asked to know when his days are coming. He says, how Hashem can you give us signs that the things are 
getting bad and he became blind towards the end of his days and Yaakov asked Hashem to be able to bless the children before you die and give them a Yerusha inheritance or write your will and everything that you do and Yaakov is the first time that Hashem Torah says that he was sick Ole, until Yaakov there were no sick people in the world, until Yitzchak there was no blind people in the world, and until Abraham there were no old people in the world. So we know that Abraham now, it says Hashem blessed him with everything. So we know Bakol, as we mentioned, is in Gematria 52. Bakol is also Ben. He blessed him with Ben. And of course, he blessed him with everything that a man can want. Richness, Torah, everything that a man can want. And he says, this time, he says, since I'm getting old, I need to marry my son, Yitzchak. Hashem promised him to continue in my ways, to receive the land of Israel, to be able to bless as I can bless others. I need to find him a wife. And he sent his best, so to speak, servant, Eliezer. Eliezer, by the way, as we mentioned, is the son of Nimrod. When Abraham, Avinu, and Nimrod had the bet, and when Nimrod says, I'm going to throw you into the fire, and Abraham says, if I come out, would you change your religion and believe in God? And he agreed. When Abraham came out, Nimrod says, I'm not going to do it. Here's my son. He gave him Eliezer. And we know Eliezer was actually one of the ten righteous people that went up to the heaven alive. We know that out of those ten people, there is also Batia, the daughter of Pharaoh, that saved, as we know, Moshe Rabenu. Then there is also the daughter of Asher, Serach. There is Eliyahu Navi. There is Yeshua Levi. There is all ten people that went to the heaven alive. And he says to him, I want you to go where? To the place where my brother lives. We know there is his brother Nahor, we know Abraham Avinu, his other brother Haran died, and his two kids, Lot and Sarah, Abraham Avinu basically married Sarah when she was 15 years old, and he took Lot, and he really adopted him and took care of him all his journeys. Because he saw within Lot, Ruth the Moabite, and from her will come King David, King Solomon, the Mashiach. Of course, Bet HaMikdash will be built, both first and second. And from his other daughter, he saw Naama, which will be the mother of, she will be one of the wife of King Solomon. And from her will come the son of King Solomon, Rehavam, that will be the king after King Solomon. So now he says to him, I want you to, find a shiduch for my, by the way, the whole halachot of shiduch and how and why and, you know, the dowry and everything like that really comes from this verse, from this chapter. By the way, this chapter, chapter 24, has is the longest chapter in the book of Bereshit. In the book of Genesis, this is the longest chapter, 24 has a lot of secrets so there's no coincidence why it's this location 24 and why it's the longest one and why it's related to Rivka so we know Abraham says do not bring me somebody from Canaanites you cannot mix you know we don't mix that's what we call the Sha'atnez the Lenin and the wool don't mix it's two different nefesh two different powers two different sources you know everything has a nefesh every creation in the world has nefesh there is a certain live aspect to it some we see some we don't only after we look into a, a very powerful microscope for an example or telescope i'm sorry microscope you see that there is protons and electrons that moves at the speed of light in rocks and things that but Regardless, he says to him, don't bring me somebody, because the Zohar says that Eliezer actually proposed his daughter to marry Yitzchak. He says, no, Abraham says, I want you to go 
I want you to go into the land I used to live and where I was born and bring me a wife for my daughter, for my son, Yitzchak. And of course, Eliezer is challenging Abraham, says, what, what if something is not going to happen? What if she's not going to want to come with me? And he says, Akadosh Baruch Hu will give you a sign. And you'll see that because of this sign, this woman will be exactly that direct and correct shiduch for my son. So, you know, Eliezer asked Hashem, by the way, this is the first time that Eliezer, the servant of Abraham, used the technology of time travel. You know, the trip between Be'er Sheva to Haran, it's actually 17 days. That's what it takes. Back then, you went on a camel. Eliezer arrived there within three hours, same day, Kayom he says. And he said, when he gets there, he says, I'm going to be at the water well. By the way, that's where our forefather met their wives at the well, water well. It's called Be'er in Hebrew. Today, unfortunately, many couple marry, but it's a different Be'er. It's a bar. Bar is B-A-R. It's the same letter of Be'er. Back then, it was holy water. Now it's alcohol. And then they wonder how come there's so much divorce. But regardless, Eliezer asked Hashem to have a woman that would say yes to give him water and yes to give water to the camels. And he says, Terem kilale daber, as he all starts speaking to Hashem, of course we see that Eliezer used the name of Hashem is the God of you know his master is the God of the world and as he speak Vayihu Terem Kila Ledaber is not even done yet and Hashem already answer his prayers Vehine Rivka Yotzet Asher Yuldale Betuel Ben Milka so here's Rivka we now remember we were introduced to Rivka in Parashat Lech Lecha and we mentioned the, the lineage at the end, all the way to Betuel, her father, and Rivka. When the Sarah was laughing inside her so-called Vatitzchak Bekirba, Sarah understood the prophecy. Vatitzchak Bekirba is the word Yitzchak and Rivka. She saw the prophecy of Yitzchak marrying Rivka. So now Rivka is coming. By the way, Rivka is 20 years old at this moment when she meets Eliezer at the water well. She was beautiful. It says, And tovat mar'e me'od betula ve'ish lo yada. Now her father, Betuel, is mentioned here. And then after, we will not hear about him anymore. Betuel, the Zohar says, his name has come from the word, Chaz ve'chalila. He used to rape betulot. He used to take a beautiful young woman that were virgin, sometimes on their wedding night, and rape them. By the way, that's happened also in Iraq and in Libya and some other leadership of the Arabs. And we see that all of a sudden his name disappeared from the Torah here. One time, then it was, he was actually was killed that night. You know, the people of Haran, Hashem said that he actually killed, he sent the angel Gabriel, to kill Betuel, because the people of that city said, look, your daughter now is going to get married. Let us rape her, just like you do to our daughter. So Hashem saved Rivka from that. We know that Rivka was so righteous. We'll see in the future here in a few minutes how righteous he was. He was actually more righteous than Yitzchak. And we see here something amazing. He asked her, for water and she says I'm going to give you and I'm also going to give your camels you know camel drink about 53 gallons they have three stomachs and they can drink one time and walk for six months without drinking water and Rivka gives 530 gallons of water 
The Zohar says when Rivka came to the water well, you remember her parents were very rich. Her brother was the gangsters of this area, Lavan. But she wanted to do the mitzvah herself and to be really the one that Hashem promised that he will do. She will be the shidduch. When she came to the water well, the water rose towards her and filled her buckets. Her, she was so righteous. It was like Yosef. When Yosef at Sadiq came to the Nile, the Nile rose ahead of him. That's why the Egyptian hid his casket, buried him in the Nile, to bless the Nile. So always be full. But it says here, Now we see in this whole discussion between Eliezer and Rivka, Eliezer keep using a very interesting sentence, a description. He says, Give me a little water from your vessel, Kadech. They said that Sarah knew the entire Torah, the word Mikadech, Mem, right, from Kaf Dalet. What's Kaf Dalet? It's 24 books of the Torah. She knew everything in the Torah, the five books of Moshe, the eight books of the prophet, and the eleven books of the writings. In essence, he keeps telling her, give me some more knowledge from your water, Hashkini na Mikadech, 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 several times. Even when he meets with her family, he keeps describing this again and again and again and again. And as we see, he says, Ashkini na mikadech. Why did he say that? To really teach all of us something amazing. The Torah is not a history book. The Torah came to teach us everything about each and every one of us. When we are born into a family, God forbid, like Rivka, Rivka was born into the worst family possible. Her father is a rapist. And a very bad. Her brother is a cheat, scoundrel, Naval, right? Lavan, Naval, Arami, Haramai. He cheated Yaakov 20,000 times. Even when you come from the worst family, it doesn't mean you have to be like them. You can be great. No matter where you come from, it's up to you to choose what you want to do with your life. Rivka chose to be with Hashem. She heard about the people of Israel before they became the Ivrim. You know, remember, who is Abraham? He's her family. He's her cousin. She heard the greatness of Abraham. And she too chose to be like Abraham. She learned the entire Torah. She knew so much of the Torah. She became such a decade that she was the only one in the whole world to be the Shidduch for Yitzchak. We know Yitzchak was a tzaddik, right? But he taught us something amazing, which we'll get to it in a minute. So we know, by the way, Eliezer brings two gold bracelets to Rivka, and he give her also a nezim. All of this resemble the beka, the shekel. All of this resemble the future gifts that will be given to the children of Israel. The Ten, it's you know, is the Ten Commandment, right? The Luchot. Also, the Beka is the half shekel that everybody was counted and bringing as a donation to build the Mishkan. In essence, Sarah was originally, and Yitzchak, will be the one to supposed to have the 12 tribes. And when Eliezer comes there to negotiate, as we see, we don't see or hear about, as we mentioned, her father, Betuel, is gone. The Zohar said that he wanted to poison Eliezer and take all his treasure. And the angel Gabriel, they put soup in front of him. And of course, he would not eat until he negotiated. And his camels, those Abraham's camels, were so righteous, they will not go into the house of Lavan until the, all the idol worshipping was removed 
And of course, the food that they put in front of him, the angel Gabriel changed those plates between him and Betuel, and Betuel died that night. That's why you'll never hear his name again. And he proposed, and he says, now I have to take Rivka to be the wife of my master, son, Abraham, and then he uses my master Yitzchak, meaning that he would live also with Yitzchak. And it says, let's see what the girl says. And they brought Rivka. And it says, Vayikraou le Rivka, v'amru aileh, ha-telchim, ha-ish aze, v'atomer aileh. Rivka doesn't even doubt for a second. She does what Abraham did. When Abraham says, lech lecha, leave everything behind. To the place I will show you. Rivka, in essence, did the same thing. She said, I will go. She didn't know where she's going, who is Yitzchak, what, nothing. She says, yes, I will go. Elech has the word El in it. I will go towards Hashem. And of course, we know that her family bless her. They give her all this blessing, but none of this blessing took hold will know in the future they said that now Eliezer take Rivka and he brings her to Yitzchak but we see here something amazing if you look at chapter 24 verse 62 it says V'yitzchak gaba mivo be'er lechi ro'i so you know, Yitzchak is coming from a certain place that's called Be'er Lechi Ro'i. Be'er Lechi Ro'i, by the way, Rabbi Yohanan, uh, Yonatan Ben Uziel, I'm sorry, Rabbi Yonatan Ben Uziel said that Yitzchak came from the yeshiva of Shem and Eva, from the Beit Hanjim Midrash. He was heading from Yerushalayim to Be'er Sheva. And another Svarah, the Zohar, says that Yitzchak really was in heaven for three years and he came back when he was 40. That's why you don't see Yitzchak in a burial of Sarah. It doesn't mention that. It is not mentioned until Rivka's coming back. It's been, he's 40, three years after the Akeda. Now, the Zohar Kadosh brings something amazing. They said that why he was there, what is this place called Be'er, means a water well, Lechi Ro'i. So we know that Hagar, she was sitting on a water well that she did not see. And an angel came to her when she saw sitting, he saw her sitting waiting for Ishmael to die, right? This is the same place that Yitzchak went and he took Hagar and he brought her back to his father Abraham and later we'll see that Hagar will become Keturah her name will be Keturah it's the same Hagar Hagar means Gera the convert and Abraham will continue to have children with her aside from Ishmael but we'll get to it in a minute and then the Torah says Yitzchak is going to the field. This is really the field of Me'arat HaMachpelah. This is the field that his mother is buried. He went to what we call visit his mother grave and yard site. And he was praying Mincha there. Lasuach Basadeh. Lasuach means to talk to Hashem. And of course also it's called Hidbodedut. It is Hashem. You know, the Zohar Kadosh says that Me'arat HaMachpela is the opening of heaven. There's two opening of heavens in Israel. In the whole world, there's only two. One is Me'arat HaMachpela and one is Beit HaMikdash in Yerushalayim. And the Zohar says that every person that is circumcised, Brit Avraham, Abraham Avinu is waiting in the opening of hell 
and trying to save this person if it's worth saving. And each neshama, the Zohar says, every person that dies, the neshama goes to Me'arat Machpela and complain to Aram and Eve for their sin. And only then they go to Yerushalayim and go back. Also, Yitzchak was praying Mincha. As we know, our forefather, Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, Avraham set the Shachrit, Vayashkem Avraham Baboker, Yitzchak, Yatsal Asuach Basade, and Yaakov, Vaitpalel Yaakov, where in the evening, by the way, if you take the second letter of each of our forefather in Hebrew, each one will tell you the time. For an example, Avraham Bet for Boker, morning, Yitzchak Tzadik for Tzohorayim, Mincha, right? And Yaakov Ayn for Arvi, right? So we see, and by the way, the entire Tefilot is written by Anshek Neset Agdola, the assembly. 120 amazing tzaddikim. They were really half men, half angel. That about 2,500 years ago, they took what Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov instituted and added to them. And it's already Ruach HaKodesh. You, you said that tefillah, you know, we have one of our rabbis, Baruch Hashem, we have seven rabbis now in the Kolo, helping and teaching and spreading Torah. And one of them, Rabbi Moshe Arush, is the head of Yeshiva Torah Chesed in uh, Eretz Israel in Beitar Elite. He gave us an amazing class today about the power of tefillah. You can see it on our YouTube channel. And you'll see how much power the tefillah has. And it's Chak is coming out, Lasuach Basadeh. And he says here, Vaisa Aina Vayar Malim Vaim. So here is the prophecy both of Yosef. Yosef, when he was sold, the camels that usually carries very stinky things, oil and all kinds of things, the Ishmaelite and Midianite, carried perfumes for Yosef. We know Yitzchak knew the smell of Gan Eden, because you remember, he was there. When he, after the Akeda, he said, Neshama went up to the heavens and came after three years. And when, in the future, Yitzchak will give the blessing when Yaakov came, he smelled the same smell of Gan Eden in Yaakov. And we see that this smell carried through Yosef. That's why there's Mashiach ben Yosef. And here, he saw something. Vaisa, Vayar. Vaisa, Aina, Vayar. And the same thing. Vatisa, Rivka, Aina, Vatere. Even Rivka, you know, carried her eyes and so. So the Zohar says they both saw the prophecy of the 12 tribes. And then, She fell off the camel. You know, this is the first time somebody really fell in love. Right? It says fall in love. You have to fall, really. That's what happened with Rivka. She was astonished by Yitzchak. She fell off the camel. By the way, the word Gamal in Hebrew... Is from Gemal, you know, it does good. Gamal does a lot of Gemilut Chasadim. It's an amazing animal that carries, that does, never complains, just goes in a desert, the worst, harsh condition, delivers whatever we need, takes, carries. Gamal is from the word Bigmol, to do good. Rabbi Nissan Kaplan has a joke from uh, Adat Haron in Yerushalayim. He says, what, what blessing you do when a camel steps on you, Ashir al Hashem ki gamal alai. It's a joke, he told me that. Let's continue. So, as we see that here, Rifka teaches us about humility and modesty. When she saw Yitzchak, she took her scarf and she covered her face. From here, we learn about the modesty of Jewish women. Vayavea Yitzchak el ha'oela, Sarah imo. So Yitzchak is 40 years old, Sarah is 20, he marries her. And now he tests, before he marries her, he takes her to the tent of his mother. And everything that his mother, miracles happen, they say the Zohar that the clouds of Shekhinah, the clouds of glory hovered above the tent. 
just like with Sarah. The candle that Rivka lit stood for six days until next Shabbat, from Friday to Friday, seven days. And the chalot that she made was fresh and warm for seven days. Same thing from Friday to Friday. And he understood this is really, in essence, Shiduch, the Besherat from Shammai. And he, Vaitnachem, then he really was comforted by the passing of his mother. So I want to finish with Avraham Avinu, as we says, Vayosef Avraham Vayikach Yishau Shema Keturah. Of course, we see that Keturah is Hagar, and she gave him birth and everything. And the Torah finish with Ve'elet, as we see here, that the Torah describes the passing of Avraham Avinu. As we saw, and Avraham was blessed and full, Vayasef El Amav, and he was 175 years old. So the question is asked, why Abraham Avinu merited to have a longer life than Sarah? We know that Sarah was more righteous than him, right? Hashem even said, what, what do you complain? Whatever she tells you, listen to her. She's above you. She's much, much, much higher than you'll ever be, so to speak. I'm saying this with uh, humility and modesty, but in essence... What's really happening here? You know, even though it's called Chaye Sarah, Abraham is passing and they should say Chaye Sarah and Abraham. Chaye Abraham and Sarah. Why Abraham is not mentioned? Why is it the life of Sarah and not the passing of Sarah and Abraham? So, in essence, they really live the same among, amount of years. Abraham Avinu, the Zohar Kadosh brings that he was 48 years old when he fully was engulfed in Hashem. 100%, 48. And he lived 175 years. And he too, it says here, Shenei, I said, two kinds of life for Abraham, right? It says, Ve'ele yemei, Shenei chaye Abraham, just like with Sarah, the two kinds of life. The first 90 years, as she said, it's not really a life until she had a son, it's Hak, so she is consider her life the 37, but combined is 127. Abraham Avinu, Shenei, he started his life when he was 48, so to speak. Now, if we take 175 minus 48, it's exactly 127. In essence, Sarah and Abraham lived exactly the same quality of life, fully in God with Hashem. The Torah then finishes with the lineage of Ishmael, but here we see, Vaikveru oto Yitzchak v'Ishmael banav. Here we see the name of Yitzchak appears before Ishmael. So our Gemara will teach us something amazing. They say that Ishmael made tshuva and he recognized Hashem and he gave the honor, the name of Yitzchak, to appear before him in the Torah. Even though Yitzchak was 13 years younger than him. Ishmael will also pass in this parasha, right? But in essence, Ishmael made tshuva. You know, the word Ishmael, you have to understand, Muhammad really taught us something about this. But he learned this from the Torah. You know, Muhammad was working for 14 years. He was a servant to a rabbi in the city of Medina. And in the Quran, he wrote in the original Quran, but he loved Jews. He never said to kill Jews or anything. There's no, that's a whole new fake Quran that was added in the future. But the original Quran, he called the people of Israel Amma Sefer, the people of the book. And he said, you know, in his own words in the Quran, the original Quran, he says, we did not receive the Torah. We, meaning the Islam. We did not receive the Torah. He said, if you don't know something, go to the people of Israel. They received the Torah. He called us the people of the book, Amma Sefer. He learned this from Ishmael. Ishmael, what's the word Ishmael? Is Yishma El. He listens to Hashem. Today, unfortunately, we have a lot of the children of Ishmael that doesn't listen to Ishmael. And they want to fight and kill and do whatever they want. But their own father, the original, who are their father? Where they came from? Hagar and Ishmael. Those, they understood how powerful the Jewish people are. Even Pharaoh says, here, take my daughter Hagar, I'd rather you be a servant 
to Abraham and Sarah than be a queen in Egypt. Ishmael made sure. Ishmael, he heard Hashem. He understood by Yom Ahu, Yeh Hashem Echad Ushmo Echad. In that final day, I too, Ishmael, would listen and obey Hashem and the Torah. The Zohar says the lineage of Ishmael here is really a big, big secret of all the things that come to the world and the future that we're experiencing today. Many of us don't even read it unless you're in a shul and hearing the Torah or you're really a Torah scholar or you're a rabbi or Talmid Chacham, but many people don't even read the Torah. You know, in Israel we have, for an example, in the world, 16 million Jews. There's maybe two or three million that really read the Torah. The rest, they argue, but they never really read the Torah. If you read this, Ve'ele Toldot Ishmael, the Torah says, Ben Avraham, Asher Yalda Lo Hagar HaMitzrit. He's not really part of the people of Israel. And Avraham does something. He sent them away, what we call as far from Israel. It says that Velivne Hapilakshim, the children of his so called concubines, Asher le Avraham, Natan Avraham Matana, Vaishalchem Meal Itzhak Beno, Baodenu Chai Kedma El Eretz Kedem. The Zohar says he sent them all the way to the Far East and he gave them gifts physical gifts. To Abraham, the essence of Yitzhak was the land of Israel and the Torah. To everybody else, it's about material. We see that even when Yaakov and Esav, they were fighting over what? Esav says, I want the earthly stuff. Yaakov says, I want the world above. I want the heavens, the Torah. So when we look at the lineage here, you'll see there's a lot of secrets of what's happening right now. But in all fairness and all truth, you know, after all said and done, we are all the children of God. And we all need to have respect to each other. We all need to work together. After all said and done, believe me, as the history of the Torah taught us, Hashem ilachem lachem v'atem tacharishon. When we plow in the Torah, Hashem will win the wars. And then even Yishmael, he would listen to Hashem. Even Esav, the Edomites, will listen to Hashem. I wish all of you a wonderful rest of the week. I want to again thank partners in Torah. Baruch Hashem, today we reach 1,500 cities around the world with this amazing, amazing foundation. And I want to also please urge you all, if you could, kindly go visit our website, neshatorah.org, and click on our YouTube channel and help us, Be'ezat Hashem, reach 1,000 subscribers and keep spreading the word of Torah through our Facebook and YouTube and every other channel that we can. I thank you all for sharing and being with us every week. God bless you all. Have a wonderful rest of the week. And Bezat Hashem, join us online to see more classes from our seven rabbis. God bless you all. Thank you so much.